Hey kids, it's the Biston Fly here. Beautiful sunny day at the moment and uh, I'm out on another bike ride. Uh, one that I've been looking forward to for a very long time because I'm just on my way back from the uh, Triumph factory where I've picked up my latest long-term loan bike. Uh, and this one is the Bonneville Bobber. Uh, now, it's, uh, this bike's been out since about uh, last October, I think it was uh, launched at a glittering uh, invite-only event, which I wasn't invited to. Not that I'm bitter, but I mention it because clearly I am. And uh, I've been keen to ride it ever since because it looked unlike any other Triumph I'd ever seen. And it's sort of uh, a cruisery type bike, uh, the type of bike of which I've never ridden before. So really looking forward to getting to know this bike over the next few days and weeks. And uh, in this next video, for the next few minutes, I'm just going to give you my initial impressions review of the bike. So the absolute first thing you notice when you jump on the bobber for the first time, not surprisingly, is the completely bizarre <laughs> riding position. It's unlike anything I've ever experienced before. Uh, a bit like you're sitting in an armchair with your feet out front. I mean, when I actually think about it, my feet aren't really out front. It's just that my legs are quite high up with a sort of 90 degree bend at the legs. So it feels like you're sitting up and it feels like your feet are quite forward, but they're not actually that, that far forward. So that's the first thing you notice. And then the next thing you notice is once you get on things like the roundabouts, is the handling on this bike. It's just phenomenal. It's got a massive front wheel on it. Uh, and I think that has a lot to do with the way it turns. It just turns in a way that it doesn't look like it should. So that's the second thing you notice. And then the third thing is just the tremendous grunt of this 1200cc high torque engine. It goes like stink, this bike. I'm kind of addicted to this third gear where it's got dollops of torque and it just seems to want to always go. But in fact, it is a six speed bike, so let's get her up to six. Sick, there we go. And uh, you can cruise along all day, it's super comfortable. It's got this little dish seat that uh, Trump spent a lot of time doing the design for. It's adjustable fore and aft. I've got it in the sort of mid position at the moment. And for my uh, medium sized frame, it feels absolutely fine. Really quite comfortable. Obviously, you can't shift about on it. And there's no option for a pillion. But uh, you could sit on it all day. I've been riding this bike for the last couple of hours now. And uh, absolutely no fatigue whatsoever. Not on my backside, not in, on my back or anywhere else. Handlebars are nice and wide really relaxed riding position and uh, you know she'd just lollop along all day like this the other thing you can't help but notice pretty soon on is just the tremendous noise this engine makes it's the same engine as that found in the t120 and the new thruxton uh, so it's a 1200 cc high torque unit but they fiddled with the tuning for the bobber and they've just made it very usable low down so all the grunt is low down i think it's maximum power output is uh, somewhere around the 4,000 RPM uh, point. It's got the 270 degree firing order and therefore it's got that characteristic low thumping noise, uh, which sounds just lovely. The exhaust look great. It's got these sort of slash cut pipes, or they look like they are. It's an opportunity to overtake. And to demonstrate the noise of that engine. It's just the right sort of volume. Any louder and it'll become annoying if you're on a long run. But uh, when you're doing things like that little overtake there, it just sounds lovely. And it really feels, this bike, like it's got loads of go. It's far more go than it really should have. I mean, it feels like it wants to rip your arms off when you give it the beans like that. It's absolutely brilliant. Gearbox is really slick. The levers feel absolutely massive for some reason. They're really quite wide. They've got a bit of a you know, girth to them, which uh, again is unlike anything I've used before, but you get used to them quickly, they feel absolutely fine. The clutch is uh, cable operated, but it's really quite light in use. Whilst we're on the practical stuff, the mirrors, it's got these uh, cool looking bar end mirrors, which work really well actually, you've got a good view out the back of these, much better than the bar ends on my Street Triple, which are much smaller, these actually, actually work. What I would say is there's a little bit of vibration I've noticed when you're going at higher speeds, at the moment it's okay, but on uh, sort of motorway type speeds, there's a bit of vibration, they blur a little bit. Uh, and similarly, there's a little bit of vibration through the seat and uh, through the foot pegs, not so much through the bars when you're at higher speeds. Um, it's not that sort of buzzy vibe that would annoy you and give you pins and needles, or at least I don't think it is. Um, it's the sort that uh, you know, you'd put down to character, and that's uh, something this bike has got in spades, its character. And in this case, that's a good thing. 
right chance to get past White Van Man. Cheeky overtakes like that are just no issue at all on this bike. There's bags of power just where you need it. So the uh, instrument layout then and the, the handlebars generally, what have we got here? Well, it's quite a simple bike actually. So on the left handlebar, we've got the information switch that cycles you through the usual trip counters and uh, miles per gallon readings, that sort of thing. Uh, indicators and horn, of course. On the front, you've got your light switch, which you can't see at the moment. Uh, so that's it for the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, uh, starter. And then this button here with the big M is the mode selection button. And it's the easiest mode selection I've ever come across. This bike has two riding modes, rain and road. I'm in road at the moment and uh, change between them, you literally just press it. See, I don't know if you can see that rain is now flashing in there. Press it again. There you go, I'm oh, in rain, and then I can go back to road. It's really easy to use. And on this bike, Triumph elected to go for the single dial, the big speedo, with an analog presentation. And uh, it's really clear to read. Uh, it's actually adjustable forward and aft, depending on where you've got the seat uh, set, whether that's forward or back. You might want to adjust that so you can read it, but it works absolutely fine where it is at the moment. And then you've got all the digital stuff at the bottom, exactly the stuff you need. I'm pleased to say it's got a fuel gauge, it's got a gear position indicator. Uh, it's even got a digital uh, RPM gauge, if I press the I button. There we go, there's the digital RPM gauge. Now how useful that would actually be, I don't know, because it's pretty much changing all the time. But it's there if you need it. But a uh, really clear presentation, I like that. And the single uh, dial in this case is sort of in keeping with the bike, I think. What I need to do, as soon as I can, is pass the Kia C apostrophe D. One of those cars that aggravates me quite a lot. For no good reason. Other than it makes me think the person driving it has no interest in cars whatsoever and indeed no self-esteem nothing behind a Ford marvellous I have to say this is uh, the best handling Bonneville I've ridden yet and I think I've ridden them all now well pretty much part of the Scrambler it just handles beautifully I mean although it looks like an, you know, an old style retro bike. The handling is anything but. The suspension is uh, comfortable, but I'd say it's probably on the uh, harder side uh, of the range. But it's certainly not jarring, it's not rattling my fillings out or anything like that. You could ride this for many hours in a day and not get fatigued. In terms of uh, weather protection, well of course it is a naked bike, so there is no weather protection. But that's absolutely fine, I'm used to riding naked bikes. There's no horrible turbulence or any current set up that I'm feeling on the helmet. Right then, what I need to do is uh, find somewhere to stop and show you around this beast. Well, this is a splendid little village. This is the village of Whitchurch. Very nice. About a little walk around just here. See why not? Perfect. I do love that big arm on the side of the stand so it makes it easy to come out. Excellent. Right. Let's show you around this bike then. Here she is. The uh, 2017 Triumph Bonneville Bobber. Uh, resplendent looking bike. This one's in the grey. It comes in uh, four colours. There's a sort of a, a green and uh, silver paint scheme. There's a dark red and there's black. Uh, this is my least favourite of them all, but it still looks pretty cool. Right, without further ado, let me get my iPhone out and uh, we'll have a proper look at the specs. Okay, so... There we go. So, 
here we have it then, the, uh, as I say, the 2017 Triumph Bonneville Bobber. I suppose you would uh, class it as a cruiser, I certainly would. Uh, as I said, it's a 1200cc parallel twin, liquid cooled. Uh, Triumph call this their high torque engine. It's uh, basically the same as the one in the uh, Thruxton. Uh, if we have a look down here, it's denoted by the HT on the 1200 there. Uh, it has been uh, tuned to give 10% more mid-range power uh, on this bike though, or, or rather 10% more than on the T120 in which it's also fitted. Uh, it's a very clever bike, the way they've done the design on this. The, it looks like a, what's called a hardtail, but in fact of course they've uh, hidden some suspension in the back. If we go down here behind the adjustable seat, you can see we've got uh, the shock there, rather well hidden to make it look like it's a solid back end. Really cleverly done. Uh, the other thing is that seat there, a little dish shaped seat, uh, looks really cool and you can adjust it. There's a, you can put an Allen key underneath it basically and it slides forward and aft. That's its middle setting at the moment and uh, it makes it, it's very comfortable for me at five foot eight, get my feet firmly on the ground. It's probably the uh, shortest bike in terms of height that I've ridden. Uh, the seat height actually is 690 millimeters. Uh, the suspension on the front, I think that's right way up forks, isn't it? The KYB forks on here. It's got uh, LED lights and those uh, really nicely finished bar end mirrors that I talked about. Switch gear, we've already talked about, but it's uh, feels really nice and good quality when you use it. Uh, it's nice and simple as well. And you've got, again, nice touches like the little uh, Triumph logo there on the, on the triple clamp. Looks really good. Okay, unfortunately, I don't like these fake carbs, which uh, they've got on this particular engine, but there you go. You either like it or you don't, I don't, but it doesn't matter. Um, and then you've got this massive tyre on the back wheel with an Avon tyre, which I believe they made specifically for this bike. And then the wheel on the front is uh, large, too, in terms of diameter. And I think that is partly why the handling is so good. It's got a ride-by-wire throttle, switchable traction control. Uh, it's got road and rain riding modes, as I mentioned earlier. Torque assist clutch, which is really light. Uh, its dry weight is actually 228 kilograms, which makes it a relatively heavy bike, but it certainly doesn't feel heavy at all when you're on the move. I guess because everything's so low down. The tank, which looks splendid with the raised Triumph lettering, uh, only holds 9.1 litres, so quite small. And uh, I've noticed when topped up, the range is saying it's about 70 miles, so you're going to be stopping quite a bit to put fuel in this one. Uh, optionally, you can get cruise control and heated grips for it. And uh, also there are some inspiration kits available. Uh, one that's sort of sports based with clip on handlebars. Uh, and the other one that's sort of uh, more old school with sort of massive ape hanger handlebars if that's your thing. But I actually quite like this uh, standard look. Price of the bike on the road, £10,500. So, which I think is actually a pretty good price for this sort of bike. And I'm trying to think of what its competitors would be. Nothing really springs to mind, I guess, other than perhaps some of the smaller Harley Davidsons, of which I know little about, so I can't really comment on how it compares. But I guess that's the main competition for the bobber. Okay, that's that. Uh, I don't think there's anything else uh, to mention. I'll just show you a couple of features of the engine again. So we've got the uh, the sort of fake carb arrangement there, which I'm not a fan of, but there you go. But what I do like is the colour-coded spark plugs, very old school. I do like the uh, engine casings. Uh, I'm not so sure about having the key there on the side, uh, which rather threw me to start with, trying to find that. Because also you then have a separate steering lock up here. Uh, and again, yeah, it's just a bit of extra faff that I could do without, but I realise that's probably done for sort of, you know, authenticity reasons. All right. That's enough chat, let's jump back on the bike and ride us some more. Let's try again. Every time I pull away I have to look at my feet and position them forward, otherwise I end up trying to put them on the engine case in very bizarre seating position but I'm sure it's just a matter of getting used to it. One thing that I think the bike would be very good for is use in town because it's very well behaved at low speed and it also feels quite a narrow bike and uh, I've already in the couple of hours I've been riding it been doing a fair bit of filtering and so on it's very very easy 
around town to do that. So if you were so inclined, it would make a pretty good little commuter. One thing I haven't talked much about is the uh, brakes on the bike. They're missing brakes, and uh, unfortunately, they're not that good. The uh, front brake only has a single disc, and so hence you have to yank the brake lever on pretty hard to have any impact. And uh, that was one of the complaints I had about the little Bonneville T100. Well, unfortunately, this bobber suffers from the same complaint. If you need to stop sharply, you really have to use the back brake and the front brake together. Again, I guess it's just what you're used to. It's just not quite as much stopping power as I'd like on a bike of this sort of power. With this amazingly low uh, seat height, in fact, with my feet on the ground, I've got a slight bend in my legs. It just makes it a very friendly bike to ride. So if uh, you like this sort of bike and you're maybe you know, getting your first big bike, even, even though it's a 1200cc, this might even be practical as the first big bike. It does go like stink though, so you'd have to be careful. But from a handling point of view, very, very easy. So that's pretty much it for my uh, first impressions review of the Triumph Bonneville Bobber. As you can tell, really like the bike already. Uh, really looking forward to getting to know it over the next few days and weeks. In summary, my thoughts on the bike. It's comfortable. It goes much faster than uh, you think it's going to. The torque is positioned exactly where you want it in at real world speeds. It accelerates really quickly. It sounds lovely, it's comfortable. The mirrors work well. Um, unfortunately, the uh, brakes aren't that great. But other than that, it seems so far to be a really great fun bike and something a little bit different. So as I say, looking forward to getting to know the bike properly. Stick around, stay tuned uh, to the channel over the next few days because there'll be lots more videos on the bobber coming. In the meantime, I hope that's been of interest to you and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.